Welcome to People in Profit. This week, driving change in the motor industry, coming up. Adapting to the post-pandemic market, new EU emissions rules and a shortage of semiconductors. We'll discuss the challenges ahead with the boss of French car brand Citroën. Electric car sales are on the rise, but how much are government subsidies driving demand? Plus the rise of carpooling in France as local governments pick up the bill for commuters. Now, 2021 was meant to be a year of recovery in the global auto industry, but the bounce back has been uneven so far. Chinese sales have already returned to pre-pandemic levels, while the EU saw the worst February for new car registrations since 2013. Add to that production problems caused by a shortage of semiconductor microchips. Let's speak now to Vincent Kobe, who's CEO of the Citroën brand. Vincent, thanks for being with us. You're launching your new C5X car today, but you're doing it at a difficult time uh, for the motor industry in general. How are things looking now a year into the pandemic for Citroën? Hi, Stephen. Thanks for having me. I think it's, it's fair to say the last year has been challenging. Um, to be honest, the, uh, the deepest part of the, of the crisis for us was the first one or two quarters where demand was totally unpredictable and consumers were staying far away from showrooms. Here we are in a situation where the market is still depressed, but more in the 10, 15% versus uh, what it used to be two years ago. So I would say we're doing not great, but we're doing okay. The toughest part is the complete uh, chaotic situation you know, one country shutting down, the other one opening up, and the next week is different. The supply chain is under a lot of stress. But I think we, we're surviving, and our amount of orders is actually quite interesting. And is that go for different parts of the world? We've heard other car makers say that, for example, you know, China's still quite strong for them while Europe is remaining weak. How is it playing out regionally for you? Yeah, if you look region by region, the situation is extremely different from one to the next. As you said, uh, China has had a very interesting and strong rebound. If you look at the Middle East and Africa, some countries, let's take Turkey, for example, is still in a very much a growth uh, dynamics in Latin America. Argentina had a great end of the year and now is more in a up and down situation. And Europe, even from one market to another, the situation is quite different. We're having quite a brisk business in uh, Spain and Italy. I'm talking Citroën here as we speak. Uh, Germany has had a, a tougher moment in the last two, three months, but I'm quite sure they'll come out strong. What's your prognosis for a recovery then? When do you think things might return to pre-pandemic levels? I think the pre-pandemic model will not exist anymore. I mean, there will be more chaos, more unpredictability. And I think agility is the key word. Uh, when it comes to uh, the pandemic, I think we'll start seeing uh, the impact of the various measures being taken, I guess, around the summer. Let's hope before rather than after. Uh, what is, will still remain is the economic challenges because the cost of a pandemic will take years to absorb. So what's important for us is to make sure that we offer relevant products, be it powertrain technology or price point for the new world that will emerge from a pandemic. And I'm sure that's what you're hoping the, the new C5X will be offering those consumers as well. I was interested to see it, it, it's coming in, in, in petrol and in hybrid, but not a fully electric uh, version for this model. What's the, the rationale behind that decision? Yeah, when we talk about C5X, the, the great car standing behind me, we're talking about a touring experience. We're talking about people, you know, driving around, discovering new places, new people and being involved in a serene journey high quality experience. For this kind of uh, demand, the right answer today, in our view, is a plug-in hybrid solution. It gives you the benefit of 100% electric when you need it, and it gives you the serenity of long range. Uh, the full electric offer will grow across Europe. It will start by the more compact segment, you know, what we call the urban vehicles, B segment, B SUV. It will progressively move the new C4, as a 100% electric offer. For vehicles of a category of C5X, it might take some more years to come. There are new regulatory pressure on car makers as well, because we have new emission standards in the EU this year as well, that um, amount of emissions coming down the threshold for it. How is that affecting overall the situation for Citroën? How are you adapting to that? 
You know, the way we look at it is uh, the regulatory pressure is just anticipating, accelerating a consumer and a societal demand. So what we've seen in 2020 is an accelerated shift from traditional combustion engine to electrified powertrains. And be it fully electric or plug-in hybrid, those vehicles have more than doubled in terms of percentage of the total market during 2020, and the growth continues. And we'll see this year that, for example, the amount of what we call low emission vehicles will probably move from, say, 7 8% to probably as high as 15% during 2021, which is an extremely substantial shift which is not only the regulatory pressure. I think it's a deep involvement of our customers into the sustainability of the world. One of the other challenges facing car makers is that global shortage of semiconductors. You have a lot of technology in your new model as well. Are you being affected by that shortage? I think we are, uh, as every car maker, under a substantial stress by the uh, current um, shortage of some electronic components. This is an extremely complex situation to, to face. The good news for us is we having a very agile company. We're having an extremely powerful supply chain and purchasing organization. And I think there's a lot of our people working day and night to ensure supply, to provide alternative solutions, to optimize the makeup of our vehicles, to minimize the consumption of those rare chips. There will be some impacts, but we believe we will mitigate most of those. Citroen has, has a new house. It's now part of the new Stellantis group. How is the brand's uh, future looking in its, in its, with its new neighbours? You know, uh, as you said, Stellantis was born in uh, the middle of January. It's a, one of the largest uh, car making companies in the world, and it's the house of uh, a number of brands, approximately 14. The, the good news here is we are being backed by an extremely solid, capable, profitable business, and it gives us a reasonably solid and confident view of all those technological innovations that are awaiting us in the years to come. So that's one part. From a brand point of view, it also requires us to become even clearer, sharper, and more relevant in the years to come as part of this variety of brands. For Citroën, it's rather good news because Citroën stands for innovation, well-being, and human approach to its customers. And I think all of those answer the societal changes we've been experiencing in the last year. Okay, Vincent Kobe, CEO of Citroën, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. You heard there that Citroën is expecting sales of low emission vehicles to rise sharply again this year. The International Energy Agency says that in 2020, electric vehicle sales topped 3 million worldwide, up over 40%. In many countries, government subsidies have helped to bring down the cost of these cars for consumers. Kate Moody's here with more on this. Kate, how much are different countries offering then in subsidies? Well, Stephen, France has one of the more generous programmes. Keep in mind the retail price for the Renault Zoe, Europe's best-selling electric car, is around €33,000 before any reduction. The French government has been giving up to €7,000 to new buyers, although that sum will begin decreasing this year, plus an additional 5000 if they also get rid of an old polluting car. Germany offers a maximum €9,000 subsidy, while the UK provides grants for 35% of the cost of a new car, up to around €2,800. The US has a federal tax credit of $7,500, that's just over €6,000. The Biden administration is hoping to raise that as part of its focus on green energy, and many states offer additional incentives for electric and hybrid buyers. Chinese subsidies depend on a car's range, but they average around €2,300. So what sort of effect are these subsidies having? There's no question that these financial incentives are helping. In China, for example, when the government began trying to scale back subsidies, electric vehicle sales slowed dramatically. In 2020, overall sales of electric and hybrid vehicles jumped, but they still only represented about 4% of the global market share. Projections suggest in the next two years, the market share could reach 45%. Are these financial incentives needed to force people to move to electric or are there other hurdles in the way of that? Well, they're certainly an important piece of this puzzle, even as countries start to enforce tighter emissions targets. Potential buyers say the issue they're most concerned about when switching to an electric or hybrid car is the cost. So a subsidy can go some way to reducing that. There's also the issue of infrastructure and charging points. The car industry is urging governments to invest more. They're also being encouraged to invest more in the production of the batteries that power electric vehicles. Without them, manufacturers could face a shortage and a real roadblock in this electric shift. OK, Kate Moody, thank you very much.
Turning to other transport solutions next and the rise of carpooling for commuters in France. Local governments in more than a dozen cities have signed contracts to add carpooling to their public transport services. It can be a win-win for the drivers and passengers, as Yuka Roya now reports. It's seven in the morning. Valérie Marquez, a hospital worker, is waiting to be picked up for her carpool journey to work. By car, it takes 50 minutes instead of an hour and a half by train. The driver also works at the same hospital. By taking a passenger, she earns almost two euros per trip. J'ai des frais de carburant assez élevés, d'environ 180 euros par mois. Et grâce au covoiturage, je peux faire une économie de 60 euros. The passenger pays nothing for the journey. The Ile-de-France regional government pays for up to two free trips per day for people who have public transport passes. Chacune garde son masque et on se dit si on a un symptôme, on annule le covoiturage. With many people now working from home, car commutes in France have gone down by almost half. But business is still booming for carpool platform providers like this one. And that's thanks to increasing amounts of subsidies from local authorities. On a signé 14 nouvelles villes en 2020. Their contract with the city of Beauvais alone brings in 150,000 euros a year. Le covoiturage gratuit pour les passagers, ça développe la pratique de manière très forte et ça permet en fait d'amener du transport public dans des zones peu desservies par les transports en commun. Although the subsidies only cover local journeys, the drive to encourage car sharing is a silver lining for the travel sector. At a time when air, rail and road traffic on the whole, it's still down 30 to 40 percent compared to pre-pandemic levels. That's all from us for now, but you'll find all of our previous episodes on the France 24 website. And if you'd like to get in touch with your comments or questions, you'll find me and the team on social media. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ever since the huge fire ripped through Notre Dame, this ancient cathedral has been turned into a giant building site. Now, two years on, the work to secure and shore up the structure is mostly finished, but the hard work is far from over. Don't miss Notre Dame Revisited in the heart of the cathedral, alongside the men and women working to save its fire-damaged vaults. Notre Dame Revisited on France 24 and France24.com.